If you're a guest with us today for the first time, or maybe the first time in a long time, uh, we would love for you to fill out one of these Connect cards that you'll find in the ha uh, hat clip in front of you. Uh, just fill it out, let us give us some information about yourself, and we'll send you some information about us. We really want to get to know you and connect with you, so this is the first step in doing that. And then also, please, if you're new to today, please come up and introduce yourself to me or one of the other pastors uh, and all the rest of us, let's, let's look for new people to welcome them into our church. But please fill this out, and if uh, you need to communicate something to the church staff leadership, you can use the bat for that, either a prayer request or anything else, or praise about the sermon, whatever you want to do. You can, I, can do I can say that today because I'm not preaching. So uh, when the offering comes around later in the service, you can drop this card in there in the plate. A couple of announcements today. First of all, pick up one of the messengers. It has a lot of uh, announcements about all the different events going on in our church. So look through that, peruse that, and you'll get probably all the information you need. But let me highlight a couple things. First of all, the gifts and call class today has been moved to Guild Hall. Um, so we'll meet in there at 1115 if you've signed up for that already. So we're Excited to see you. So that's at 1115 in Guild Hall. Also, life groups start this week. You can sign up for those at a table out on the patio today. Uh, we've also added a, a, a day life group for those of you who may not want to drive at night or just can't come on Thursday nights. Um, and there's information about that at the, I think it's on Wednesday, and there's information at the table about that. The other important uh, announcement is we do have a harvest dinner coming up, and I just want to highlight that. The information details are in here, but it's October 18th. I want to call Scott Kale up here for a quick announcement about things going on in uh, youth ministry. Yes, we, uh, this fall, we're, every fall, we do a confirmation class for students that are in eighth grade, uh, and we're a couple weeks into that class. Uh, we're going to have confirmation Sunday later in November, middle of November. But we pair adult mentors with the students each year as they go through. And I need four more mentors, two men and two women that are willing to come alongside an eighth grade student and get to know them a little bit. You definitely don't have to be an expert or a teacher or anything. This is just a relational time where you could uh, get to know them, share a little bit of your spiritual journey, and inquire about theirs and how it's going. So please see me afterwards or email me or give me a call if you are interested in doing that. It just means meeting with them two or three times in the next five to six weeks. Thanks. So today is World Communion Sunday. Uh, it's a special day in the life of the church. Churches all over the world are celebrating this. It's a day that we remember that we are part of a Catholic church or a universal church all over the world. I always love this Sunday because I think of uh, people beginning in Australia sharing communion together, and then as the world turns, um, people all over the world, millions, billions of people, um, having sharing communion together. So today we are having some of our congregation members uh, speak some words in their own languages, and you'll see that in the bulletin. So that's what's going on. Let's now prepare our hearts for worship. Take a moment to just quiet and silent, silence our hearts and Prepare for, to do what we've been created to do, and that is to worship the living God.
Today we gather around God's table from near and far. Though we differ in language, custom, and tradition. Nous sommes tous les enfants de Dieu. Nous sommes unis dans l'esprit. Nous sommes frères et sœurs dans le Christ. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Ми всі народ Божий, ми єдині в дусі, ми брати і сестри у Христа. So, we set aside the small things that divide us. Wir sind alle Gottes Volk. Wir sind eins im Heiligen Geist. Wir sind Brüder und Schwestern in Jesus Christus. And we remember that with God we can overcome all things. Papal view a dimni e kid. A radim oath an een an a rasprit. Brodir a huyarid a dimni an Christ. Today we remember and live into the hope that unites and sustains us. Todos somos pueblo de Dios. Somos uno en espíritu. Somos hermanas y hermanos en Cristo. Come, let us worship the God who saves the whole world in Christ. seated. I invite you to join me in the prayer of confession. Gracious God, you call us to gather together around one table to share in the feast that's been prepared. Yet so often we prefer to pursue our own courses. You have promised us the abundance of all creation. Yet as we look after ourselves, the world goes without. You have promised us the bread of life itself. Yet as we feed ourselves, 
the world goes hungry. You have promised us the waters of peace and justice, yet in our discord, the world goes thirsty. And now we are famished too, Lord. So have mercy on us, forgive us, feed us, transform us at this table, and send us to the rest of our lives to feed, to forgive, to serve, and to love by the power of Christ. We pray this in His name. Amen. Well, we know God's Word to be true, and in His Word He promises us that if we confess our sin, He's faithful and just to forgive us for that sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let's remember that today, especially today, and let it affect the way we live. Now, would you stand and just share the, the grace and the peace of Jesus Christ with those around you?
for that. Before I uh, read God's word to us today from scripture, I wanted to uh, call your attention to just one other announcement in the, uh, the messenger today. That is, uh, Mike Bendrowski is going to be out in the courtyard taking signups. If you're interested in joining with the Oakland cleanup event that's happening on October the 15th in the morning at San Antonio Park in Oakland. And I've heard a lot of people say, how come you have so many of uh, services projects where it's cleaning up trash? <laughs> well, a lot of reasons, actually. First of all, there's lots of it to be picked up. And secondly, it's a wonderful way for people to get together and get to know each other. You walk around together for two hours or so, you really get to know one another. It's outside, which has been a really big deal during the COVID epidemic and everything. And finally, you get to see a part of the city of Oakland that you probably have never been to. And you get to hear from somebody from the local neighborhood telling you about what the needs are in that neighborhood. So that's a lot that can happen. So I wanna encourage you to sign up for the upcoming event on um, October the 15th or another event, and if you can't make that, Bob Wright is here today, and loaves and fishes, and people from the church are gonna be making a meal to share at City Team that same afternoon to take it down to City Team that night. So you can talk to Bob if you'd like to help with that event. October the 15th, a lot of service going on. So let's turn now to God's word today to us from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 12. We're continuing the uh, sermon series focus on gifts and call, and you're going to hear a lot about that as well and what Paul has to say to you today. So listen now for God's word to you this morning. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot would say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them, as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for your word and for your world this day, for the privilege, the joy, and also the challenge of living in it, of discovering what our calling is and working together to fulfill your will and to live into uh, your love and mercy. So open our ears, our eyes to your word this day, we pray in Jesus' name, amen. So, last Saturday night, I went to a rock concert with Eric Behrens, member of Piedmont Community Church, who was one of the guys who spoke in French up here uh, for the call to worship. It was really, really fun. And it wasn't just a concert, really. It was actually an educational event called, uh, it was a tribute to the music of Paul McCartney called A Stroll Down Penny Lane. A stroll down Penny Lane. So what it was, basically, you, go, you sit in this theater, it's in San Leandro, and this band plays some really good, about 30 songs in almost note-for-note -note reproduction of all sorts of uh, Beatles songs and Paul McCartney solo songs and Wings and all this kind of stuff. And at the same time, behind the band, there's a screen and there's uh, animation and videos and movie clips that are showing, telling you the stories behind a whole lot of the songs. Really, really a cool thing. Anyway, after the show, you know, after the rock concert, you always want to talk about it. Eric, Eric and I were talking about, uh, as both of us are huge Beatles fans, 
uh, talking about the process that the Beatles went through in their songwriting. And basically what it boils down to is this. Paul and John would come up with all sorts of ideas on their own, and then they'd either teach the songs directly to George and Ringo, or they would take total charge of shaping those songs in the studio. If you saw Peter Jackson's documentary on the making of Let It Be, you kind of saw how it works. It was very much a two-man operation, or a three-man operation if you can't producer George Martin earlier on. Anyway, as these two guys came in and sort of dominated the whole scene, at the same time, the other two band members would basically just sit back and do what they were told, even if they were seething inside because their songs weren't being done. And it made me think of something that the uh, rock and roll critic for the Los Angeles Times, Robert Hilburn, wrote a few years ago. He compared the top-down creative process of the Beatles in songwriting to the much more egalitarian approach of another world-famous band. And here's what he wrote. You too collaborates to a degree that is rare. It's a process that depends on the singular chemistry of the four musicians. Bono and guitarist The Edge bring ideas into the studio a title, the trace of a melody, or a catchy riff, and then bassist Adam Clayton and drummer Larry Mullen join in the actual construction of the songs. The grueling give and take sometimes stretches for weeks as the musicians toss ideas back and forth, equal partners in the search for an emotion that seems fresh and deeply rooted. Any note? It's obviously not the case that U2 is a better or more successful rock band than the Beatles. But obviously both models of songwriting work. And they work well. But here's the thing. Think back to what I just read from Paul's letter to the Corinthians. And if you do that, you realize that what St. Paul, not Sir Paul, St. Paul, wrote to the Corinthians, you see that only one of these models fits what it's like to be in the band of sisters and brothers we call the body of Christ. And it's the one that includes everyone equally. So who are we? Are we a Beatles or a U2 kind of church? Now, it's clear what St. Paul thinks we should be. He's, he's writing this letter. He's, uh, we think, in Ephesus, and he's writing it to a church that he had founded all the way across the Aegean Sea in present-day Greece in Corinth. He's heard some bad news about what's going on in that church. People were fighting. There was conflict. It was being torn apart by all this stuff that was going on. People were bragging about Oh, I'm more important than you to the life of the church, or I'm more spiritually gifted than you. And they were lording it over other people in the community. And this infuriates Paul. Now, to be clear, there's absolutely nothing wrong with individuals being gifted. As Steve talked about in his sermon last week, uh, every single follower of Jesus Christ is gifted by God in all sorts of ways to serve God's purposes, to serve one another, and to serve the world. And in his various letters, Paul comes up with at least four different lists of the various spiritual gifts. I'm not going to tell you what they all are. That's going to come later. But they range from prophecy to administration to faith to helping other people out to preaching to teaching, speaking in tongues, interpreting in tongues. The lists, as they say, go on and on of spiritual gift, and those lists aren't even exhaustive of what the spiritual gifts are. After all, there's huge diversity in our individual gifts, and that's great. But here's the thing. That diversity of gifts only works, it only makes sense because of the essential unity we share in Christ. That's our identity. And what unifies us, Paul says, 
among other things, is our shared experiences, our shared experiences of baptism and of uh, celebrating the sacrament or, or sharing the meal we call communion, especially today on World Communion Sunday. That's what unites us, among other things. Because that, as I say, that's what unites us, and that brings us to uh, Paul's great metaphor that he turns to for this unity we share in the church, and that is the human body. It's a metaphor he uses for this. He says that it's important to realize that we are like a body in the church. We are um, all bound together as one, but for him, that body image is more than just a mere symbol. Because the reality Paul's getting at is this, that the risen Christ who exists in spirit after the resurrection also has come to have a physical body right now. And that body is you and me. It's us and every other Christian who's ever been part of the body of Christ. We are all the Christ's body, his physical body body, and just as a body has many parts, the Greek word mele is often translated as members, just as the body has many members, for it to function properly, they all have to come together as one. Now, it's obviously true that a human body can get along pretty well without a few parts, right? Like a fingernail, or an appendix, and it can't get by all that well without a heart or brain. But God, Paul says, has mysteriously created the body of Christ so that every part has its place and its purpose for the functioning of the whole. And then, as you heard, Paul pushes this metaphor a bit further, in fact, if you ask me, he push, pushes it quite a bit further. He imagines a body of only one part. Okay, get this image. There's a giant hand or an intestine that's just flopping around. Pretty gross if you ask me. And he doesn't stop there. What if a foot said to a hand, presumably a hand that has ears, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body. That wouldn't make it any less a part of the body, Paul says. No, it wouldn't. As it is, there are many members, yet one body. Okay, enough with the weird imagery. <laughs> the point is that our identity as Christians lies not in any status we have or in any understanding of how special we might be versus somebody else in terms of our gifts. It's the oneness we share in Christ as the church when we act together to love, to heal, and to mend the world. I really like how the uh, writer Frederick Buechner summarizes all this body talk. Frederick Buechner just died a few months ago, so uh, it's appropriate that, we, uh, that I mention his words. Really good stuff. He writes this. When you come right down to it, what is God up to in putting all of these very different people into one tattered bunch we call the church? God is making a body for Christ. As Paul said, Christ didn't have a regular body anymore, so God makes him one out of any body God can find. God uses other people's hands to be Christ's hands and other people's feet to be Christ's feet. And God is going to keep on doing this, as Paul says in Ephesians 4, until we all grow up into the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That is, when we can all see Jesus in each other and be Jesus for each other. That's quite a vision, isn't it? And one of the keys to living into this vision is for the church to help each member, each person, each individual, discover and develop their spiritual gifts. That's what we intend to do. So what is a spiritual gift? You might be asking. Well, Steve talked about it last week. 
God has gifted each one of us in a unique way. So each one of you, each one of you is a -a one-of-a-kind feat of divine engineering. God's work of art. So am I. And we are joined together into one body. According to our gifts, some of us are feet, some of us are hands, some of us are eyes, some of us ears, all the rest. And if you're a hand, you don't want to do the work of a foot or try to be an ear when you're really an eye. So it's important to find your fit, your gifts. Because if you don't, if you don't bother, or if you forget, or if you get too busy doing all sorts of other stuff, you're probably going to experience some discouragement as a Christian. And you'll probably have a pretty hard time experiencing the abundant life that God has for you in Jesus Christ. So, Here's how Tim Keller, who's a pastor in New York City, here's how he defines a spiritual gift. It's an ability that comes to you freely. It's a gift, after all. It's a gift from the Holy Spirit for the purpose of serving God and other people so as to build up Christian community for the common good. Doesn't mean gifts only serve people inside the church. They reach out beyond as well. After all, we're called to be for the world, to be the body of Christ for the world, not just for ourselves. It's how we work together as individuals in the body of Christ to bring healing and hope and justice and compassion to a world where so many people are starving so much for it. So, how do you find out what your spiritual gifts are? Well, 30 of you signed up to take the gifts and call class that we're going to start right after this worship service. And if you didn't sign up, don't worry. We're going to be offering the class again in the future, hopefully not too long in the future. And, um, but you don't have to take a class. I, I guarantee you, you do not have to take a class to figure out your fit, to find your fit, to, to discover your spiritual gifts. So how can you start? Well, one thing you can do is to ask some questions. Okay? Ask yourself, or someone who knows you pretty well, what do you care about in life? What are your passions? What abilities do you have? Or what sorts of things do you do or like to do for other people, and how do you like doing them? Take some time with that. Now, as you do, it's important to make a distinction between what you might, what we call spiritual gifts and what you might call your natural talents. Because, you know, sometimes they're pretty similar and sometimes they're not. Because every person has talents, every person has talents and abilities that they can use on behalf of other people. That's natural. But Christians have both natural talents and the gifts we receive from the Spirit of God to do the work of the church. For example, the other day, Steve Shipstead and I were over at Primera Iglesia uh, Hispana in East Oakland, the church where we gave uh, money to for their feeding program last Christmas. We were over there visiting to sort of explore future avenues for ministry we might go into. And, And we got there, and I noticed an incredible metallic cross standing in the churchyard. I've been to that church many times. I'd never seen it before. And so it was probably 10 feet tall, and it was, uh, you know, soldered together and painted, and it was a beautiful, beautiful structure. And I, I asked my friend Irma, who works at the church, where did it come from? And she said that a metal worker who was unemployed during COVID designed and built the whole thing on his own and gave it to the church. Ten-foot cross. It's a beautiful thing. And it's what can happen when your natural talents match your spiritual gift in some way. But sometimes, maybe even a lot of the time, they don't match all that well, or at least it's not easy to figure out how those talents and spiritual gifts match. Like the guy who created a stroll down Penny Lane. Remember that? The show I saw last week with Eric. 
His name is Joe Anastasi, and he lives right here in Piedmont. At, by day, he is a well-known and respected forensic accountant. Do not ask me what they do. I guess they count things forensically or something like that. But, but by night, this forensic accountant turns into a guitarist with a voice that sounds a whole lot like Paul McCartney's. And I don't know anything about Joe's religion. It's just not clear to me how his professional skills match his musical passion. But that sort of stuff happens all the time. In fact, another good example is uh, Eric, Eric Behrens himself. I said, I, I told him I was going to mention him today, so please don't be embarrassed, Eric. But in his professional life, before he retired, Eric was a... Uh, highly successful and skilled attorney. But over the years, while he was an attorney, he discovered and developed a gift for studying and teaching the Bible. And that gift has served a whole bunch of guys who've attended the men's Bible study that Eric has been leading at this church for over 20 years. And there are so many other examples, so many other people out here today or watching online, I could mention about how God gives you something in a way that maybe you would have never thought you would ever receive, a gift. Like another well-known lawyer, not in this church, who is better known as a writer, in fact, a world-famous best-selling novelist, John Grisham. Did you know that he and his wife have been teaching kids in Sunday school for over a decade every week? Or Jimmy Carter, building houses with Habitat for Humanity. God gifts everybody. So, what can you do to find your spiritual gifts? Well, first, be patient and open-minded. It can take time and maybe a few hits and misses along the way as you try to figure out your fit. And the other thing is your gifts can change over time or be put to different uses at different periods in your life. So don't worry about if you're not like getting something out of doing something you've been doing for a long time. God uses you in different ways at different points. The point is to jump in and try different stuff in the church. Don't assume that your day job skills or your usual interests are the same as your spiritual gifts. As I said, sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. Just try stuff, pay attention, and you might be surprised. In fact, I think you probably will be by what you find. Now, over the next few weeks, as I said, we're going to continue our series on gifts and calling. You're going to hear a whole lot more about how to discover your spiritual gifts and how to use them for the, for the community, for the common good, for God and God's people. But today, as we celebrate World Communion Sunday, I invite you to think about how all the gifts that God gives us, all of us, all over this world, think about it, how in all our diversity, we're also one in unity. And as we come together to this table, we are joined in one body or rejoined. We receive the bread and the cup, the body and the blood, the life force of Christ as a gift. And in gratitude, we are sent out from this sanctuary to share our own gifts, to nourish, serve, and love each other and the world in Jesus' name. You see, we are gifted people. And one of our gifts we all share is to recognize our essential need for each other. Now, I want to clear something, clarify something about what I said earlier. <laughs> don't think I was saying U2 is a better band than the Beatles. I don't want to hear that. The Beatles were the best band ever. I've taught my children that their whole lives long. <laughs> but their creative process doesn't match what St. Paul was getting at in Corinthians, does it? Because our work together as the body of Christ is designed by the Spirit to use everyone's gifts 
equally. And that means you too. So let's make some music together, okay? But before I call the choir up to sing the, uh, the offertory, let's pray. Loving God, we thank you that in all of our diversity, we are also one body together. And you've given a, each one of us unique passions and abilities to do what you call us to do and to be who you've made us to be as your people. So as we get ready to come to the table in a few moments, we dedicate our gifts to you, whatever they are. Guide us to discover and to develop them for the common good and build us up as a community of faith so that we, we can work together to mend the world in Jesus' name. And everybody says together, amen. And now I want to invite the ushers to come forward and the choir to come forward, and we are going to be taking our offering today. Let us give graciously and generously to God as we have been given.
celebrate today, we remember today, and we give thanks today as we take part in the Lord's table. Everyone in the world is invited without exception to participate and join with us as we partake today. The Bible tells us that the people will come from the east and the west and the north and the south to sit at the table of the kingdom of God. According to Luke, when our risen Lord was at the table with his disciples, he took bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to them and their eyes were opened and they recognized him. This is the Lord's table. Our Savior invites those who trust him to share in the feast that he has prepared. Now I invite you to join me in the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Please be seated. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you this morning, joining our voices with the heavenly choirs, with all the faithful of every time and every place who forever sing to the glory of your name. Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna to the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Be with us now, Holy Spirit, as we take this bread and this wine. By your Spirit, let us know the presence of your Lord Jesus Christ in this moment. Accept our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving as a living and holy sacrifice, offering of ourselves that our lives may proclaim the one crucified and risen. Hear us now as we pray the prayer our Lord has taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he turned to his disciples and he said, Take and eat. This is my body. It's broken for you. Whenever you do this, remember me. In the same manner also, after supper, he took the cup. And again, he turned to his disciples and he said, this cup is the new covenant of grace shed for the forgiveness of all sin. Whenever you drink this, remember me. So friends, every time we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we proclaim the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you haven't been here uh, at Piedmont Community Church, when we've taken communion, we... Uh, Come down the center aisle, line up, come forward. There'll be two people on this side, two persons on this side, and you can take the elements um, and then go ahead and partake. And we have some baskets where you can actually put the plastic cups and then return to your seat. Let me remind you again, we're in no hurry here today. Take your time. Uh, this is a sacred moment. And also, if you would like prayer, today for something uh, going on in your life or someone else that's really weighing on your heart. As you come forward, just ask one of the pastors to pray uh, with and for you. Okay? All is ready. The gifts of God for the people of God. Let's share in the meal together.
23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let us, let us stand and sing our final hymn together. sisters, as we leave this sanctuary or as we end this time of worship together, take with you whatever gift you have received from the presence, the Spirit of God, and the people gathered here today. Let that fill you with the love and the mercy and the joy that God has for all of us to serve together, for we are one body with many members. There's no solo acts in the in the people of God, we're all in the same band together. So let's go out and make some beautiful music together. And as we do so, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be and abide with each and every one of you, both now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>